Hi, I'm Joel Sircell, PI of the NIAC Phase II project, Sutter Ultra, Breakthrough Space Telescope for Prospecting Asteroids. My co-eyes are Mr. Pete Gorell of Gorell Software and Professor Robert Jedeke of the University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy. Project manager on this project is Mr. Phil Wall of Transastra, and Phil is also the lead mechanical engineer. I'd like to start this presentation by showing you some clips of a video we made that describes the Sutter concept. Let's start with the problem. The Earth is surrounded by millions of pieces of space debris, and that problem is only getting worse. For this reason, detecting and tracking space traffic and orbital debris is a new critical problem for our society. But we started Sutter with the idea of prospecting asteroids. Keep in mind that there are nearly a billion near-Earth asteroids larger in size than an automobile. But we've discovered only 0.003% of them. If we're going to enable a gold rush to space, we need a way to find them. Our statistical models show that there are thousands of near-Earth asteroids, roughly the size of a house, in highly Earth-like orbits around the sun. These near-Earth asteroids represent trillions of dollars of potential wealth, but to date, humanity has only been able to find about 20 of these low delta V small near-Earth asteroids. The reason for that is because they move too fast for large telescopes to track. Transastra's Sutter Ultra mission can do exactly that. Let me tell you how it works. At the core of Sutter is something we call matched filter tracking. It's really a breakthrough for finding moving objects in space. Let's start with why today's telescopes can't find moving objects in space. Everyone knows that if you take a short exposure of the sky, it shows you something like this, just the bright stars. Faint objects start to appear as exposure time increases. Fast moving objects move between pixels in the camera during the exposure. So they don't even show up unless they're really bright. What we do instead is list all the possible tracks that objects could take through the field of view. Here's some examples of possible tracks. Typically when we're running our telescopes, we postulate on the order of 10,000 tracks per every set of images that we process. What we do is we computationally add pixels along possible tracks. Another innovation behind Sutter is our compound telescope design. Here we have the Sutter Ultra spacecraft, each of which carries 109 telescopes. Sutter Ultra spacecraft are located out in space, facing away from the sun. The concept is to arrange those fields of view out in the distance so they form a cross in space. In this way, the 109 telescopes on a Sutter Ultra spacecraft actually sweep out a massive field of view, nearly 45 degrees in extent, which would take upwards of a thousand telescopes. Our roadmap starts with the telescopes that we're testing on the ground today, like this one depicted here. After that, we'll move into Sutter Demo, which is to fly four Sutter telescopes on one of our Worker B orbit transfer vehicles to show how Sutter can work in space, but that alone would have a revolutionary capability for space domain awareness and find hundreds and hundreds of new asteroids. After that, we'll move into fully operational Sutter missions. As this image shows, our conceptual designs suggest that we can fly three Sutter Ultra spacecraft on the launch of a single Falcon 9, with each Sutter Ultra spacecraft carrying 109 30 centimeter class telescopes. We start with the Sutter Ultra reconnaissance architecture, what we call SUTRA, which is three Sutter Ultra spacecraft flying in cislunar space, as shown in this little video clip. One Sutter Ultra at L4, one Sutter Ultra at Earth Moon L5, and one Sutter Ultra at Earth Moon L2. You can see in this animation spacecraft leaving Earth orbit and transiting to the moon. There's an asteroid that moves through the field of view, and the three Sutter spacecraft catch them all. Our calculations suggest that this configuration of Sutter Ultra spacecraft, in addition to finding thousands of near-Earth asteroids, will be able to monitor pretty much all the traffic in cislunar space. Each Sutter Ultra spacecraft flies in heliocentric space in elliptical orbits with a semi-major axis of one. And we've calculated that this Sutter Ultra configuration will discover 300 times more asteroids in just its first year of operation than have been discovered in the history of astronomy. They will also supply 
a very important last line of observation for planetary defense for any potentially hazardous asteroids that get through all the other observation systems. Let me summarize the achievements of the Sutter Ultra project so far. First, we've designed, fabricated, integrated, and deployed two breakthrough telescope systems. Secondly, we successfully demonstrated the baseline end-to-end -end image processing pipeline based on match filter tracking from our original phase two proposal. We showed that we can run the Sutter algorithm on a processor that is compatible with integration on a small sat spacecraft. And we've shown that we can meet the Minor Planet Center's reporting requirements for accuracy. The Minor Planet Center is an organization that accepts tracks from all over the world from discovered asteroids. And we've shown that we're compatible with that. Now we get into some of the exciting stuff. The first two bullets I talked about were what we planned. But what we didn't plan was inventing and demonstrating a breakthrough image strategy and algorithm that we call optimized match filter tracking. It's a hundred to a thousand times reduction in the processing performance needed for real-time shift and add detection of asteroids and moving targets in space. We've demonstrated this with simulated imagery and with actual imagery from operational telescopes, and the patent for it is pending now. The reason this technology is so important is, as we move to flying Sutter technology in space and putting the Sutter algorithms on space-based processors, this dramatically reduces the power requirement for processing that imagery. Next, we've found dozens and dozens of known asteroids, found their tracks, and submitted them to the Minor Planet Center, proving the performance of the system. Next, we've found many unknown asteroid tracklets. We haven't submitted those to the Minor Planet Center yet because we're doing quality control on the tracks before we submit them. But we think this is going to be a very big deal in a matter of weeks. Finally, we've actually accomplished space domain awareness by tracking spacecraft in space beyond the orbit of the moon. We've also, lastly, refined a very exciting mission roadmap that starts with building a ground-based network of very inexpensive Sutter telescopes. By the time of this symposium, we will have announced that Transastra and the Celestron Telescope Company are forming a partnership for deployment of space domain awareness and asteroid finding telescopes here on the ground and in space. Now, as part of that, we've actually designed a global network of very inexpensive telescopes using commercial off-the-shelf hardware and the Sutter algorithm that we think will be able to survey the entire night sky every day with 50% redundancy and find moving objects down to magnitude 19, moving at speeds of up to 10 degrees per day. This means that we'll be able to survey space domain awareness from the vicinity of GEO to way out beyond the moon and find lots and lots of asteroids. Sutter phase two, what we're doing right now is we've done ground-based proof of concept and shown that we can remotely operate our telescopes, gather good data, and report it to customers. Our currently deployed hardware includes four RASA 11 F2.2 telescopes. We've also done significant design and development of new integration of cameras, software, mechanical systems, and telescope mounts. So we're operating out of the Weiner Observatory, a few hours south of Tucson in Sonoida, Arizona, and the Sierra Remote Observatory in Aubrey, California. Here's an example of space domain awareness of tracking the JWST. Now, as I play this GIF, you can see a dot, a faint dot moving, where we found the Webb telescope. We knew roughly where to look in the sky for this, but we didn't presuppose the position of the telescope. Now, actually, tracking JWST is pretty easy. So here's an example of, in this case, it's asteroid 1999 CS11, which is a visual magnitude 18 and a half. Now, watch this GIF and see if you can find that asteroid. If you can find it, raise your hand. If anyone raised your hands, you're kidding. You can't actually see it. The reason is that asteroid is below the noise threshold. Here we show using dozens of images stacked on top of each other, though even though each individual image is below the noise threshold, we can see this asteroid. And we've actually reported this detection to the Minor Planet Center and they've published it. So 
The original roadmap in our proposal to NASA include our current ground-based phase two project, the Sutter demo mission, which we originally said we could fly in the 2025 timeframe, and Sutter Ultra, which we originally suggested could be flown in about 2027. Since then, we're working really hard to define a minimal Sutter Alpha mission, which could be flown on a CubeSat or an other small design. We have a couple of designs in mind. We think we can get it for under $3 million. And we can do Sutter Survey before we fly Sutter Ultra. We're very excited about our progress on the Sutter mission designs and the work we're doing on the ground with software and new inventions. We think this is going to usher in a revolution. And by finding and tracking thousands of asteroids that have delta Vs less than the return delta V of the moon, we can usher in a gold rush to space. Thank you.